I am James David Manning, the quintessential American, broadcasting uh, from the great metropolis of New York City. Our studio is located in our church building. Our church building is located in the community known as Atla. Now, Atla is a new name that Almighty God's given for the community form and known as Harlem. How's everybody doing today? Now, very quickly, I need to get to the item of uh, commentary that we promised you over the last couple of days. And we have been, throughout this Holy Week, uh, focusing on the uh, life and times of Barack Hussein Obama, covering and uncovering the many sealed records that he has hidden from the American populace. Uh, just the other day, George Stephanopoulos, the host of the Good Morning America show on uh, ABC News, uh, asked Mr. Obama about all of the uh, interest now being focused on his birth certificate because of uh, Mr. Donald, Tr Donald Trump, a New York real estate entrepreneur. And Mr. Obama's response is not the critical thing here. What is critical is that George Stephanopoulos, who was a political science major in the uh, Columbia University during the years of 1981 and 83 when uh, Barack Hussein Obama allegedly would have attended Columbia University, stated uh, before Mr. Obama was illegally elected as president uh, when an investigation was had about Mr. Obama's missing years at Columbia University, he stated that the, he was a political science major as Barack Hussein Obama alleged to have been a political science major there at Columbia University, but the entire time he was there, George Stephanopoulos stated, and it's on the record, that he never sued, ne never saw, never knew, never heard of, never knew of him, anybody ever heard of Barack Hussein Obama. And you need to know, though Columbia University is a very large school, the political science class Usually, if you're in that major, you come in contact with uh, your fellow classmates. The other thing is that Mr. Barack Hussein Obama has such a striking appearance and being an alleged African-American in a largely white uh, school as Columbia University is, uh, there is no way that anybody on campus would not have noticed Mr. Obama at Butler Library or Low Library or within the confines of the quad there at Columbia. He wasn't there, and George Stephanopoulos uh, made a declarative statement that he, he wasn't there. But my interest is this, is that when Stephanopoulos sat across from Mr. Obama, now the alleged president, he acted as if he didn't say that. And he acted as if the issue of the birth certificate is some sort of a, you know, wild idea of a bunch of race haters like Bertha's who are just pursuing Obama because he's black, that it is silly, and that America ought to be about something else other than concerning the birth certificate. It ought to be about the budget. George Stephanopoulos is perhaps one of the biggest hypocrites, liars, and phonies that have ever sat before a television camera. But that's not what I want to focus on here today. I want to reveal information that Obama thinks he has sealed but God has a way. The Bible tells us everything that is spoken in the closet will be shouted from the rooftop and everything done in the dark will be brought to the light. And I want all Americans to know now, though Mr. Obama has sealed all his records as his second executive order to seal permanently all of his records, has done so with court orders, and has spent $2 million with a fancy law firm in Washington, D.C., so that the court challenges that he has faced over the past three years uh, would be handily closed and no information about his birth or where he was born would be made known. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. My friends, you just can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide. Now what I want to focus on today is the unusual spectacular phenomenon of the fact that Barack Hussein Obama, who was a C student 
at Occidental College, a pot smoker by his own admission in his book, Dreams from My Father and other subsequent interviews, was able to rise after completing his second year at uh, Occidental College with nothing more than a C average, was able to enter into Harvard Law School in 1988 and by 1989 had become the president of the Harvard Law Review. Now, of course, in order to get into graduate school at Harvard, you've got to be on the dean's list of your undergraduate school, and you've got to got, have had stellar, stellar grades and, and just a stellar, if you will, unique uh, educational experience. Obama was able to go directly to Harvard and we proved in the CIA Columbia Obama sedition and treason trial that Obama never attended Columbia University. George Stephanopoulos stated he was there. He never saw him. Wayne Allen Root, who also was a political science major and a presidential candidate on the Libertarian Party uh, and is now running to be the uh, head of the Libertarian Party, also stated unequivocally and gave written testimony in the CIA, Columbia, Obama sedition and treason trial, that he was a political science major between the years of 1981 and 83, and he never saw of Obama. He doesn't know anybody who knows Obama. They held the 25th anniversary for the political science class of Columbia University, and guess, and this just happened a few years ago, guess who was the keynote speaker? Was it Mr. Barack Obama or Wayne Allen Root? It was Wayne Allen Root. So Obama never attended Columbia University, that we know. So obviously now, the only two schools that we, that he know, that we know he attended at the graduate level uh, was Occidental College, where he was a C student for two years, and then off to Harvard. Now, he left uh, Occidental in 1981. We were able to demonstrate unequivocally that he was then recruited by the CIA uh, to work with the Mujahideens when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan and uh, he became a gun runner, a drug runner, a supplier uh, because of his uh, native tongue which was Islam after having been raised in Indonesia and Jakarta and because of his understanding of, of uh, Islamic uh, thought and religious ideal and because of his complexion uh, he blended right in in Pakistan and in Afghanistan and was able to operate as a CIA agent where a European Westerner could not have operated uh, freely uh, in the Afghan-Pakistan area because of their skin color, racial, cultural ethos. It made it impossible. Obama was a perfect match. Obama spent four years from 1981 to 1985 uh, in the uh, Pakistan area helping the Mujahideen fight the Soviet Union in Afghanistan as a go-between and uh, drug runner and also arms supplier to the Mujahideen and ultimately was able to help to organize a group that came out of the uh, Mujahideen called the Taliban organization. Obama resurfaced in America in Chicago now as a community organizer in 1985, where he works for three years as a community organizer. Now check this out. If Obama would have graduated in 1983, which he alleged to have done from Columbia University with a bachelor's degree in political science, the normal thing to do was to, to pursue that by going to yet another college or continuing there in the graduate level at Columbia. But that's not what is record that is clear, that can be unequivocally demonstrated and proven that he did not enter Harvard until 1988, and these records are open for anyone to investigate. There was, from 1983 to 1985, would have been the year to graduate. The five-year layover was from 1981 until 1985, where he surfaces in Chicago as a community organizer and then spends three years there uh, working with the community organization group that he claims to have worked with. But my, my point is this, anyone with a prestigious degree in political science from Columbia University does not have to take a $10 a week job as a community organizer. With a, with a Columbia degree, you are in like Flint and you can get into any other institution. That didn't happen. All of this can be demonstrated unequivocally and documented with 
uh, bullet points and with entries that can be uh, presented to any governor, president, or any other person interested. Those persons know who I'm talking about. But you know the thing I find more interesting about Obama's rise from Occidental uh, and only having completed two years there as a C student and then walking right into Harvard and then a year later everybody knows he's the president of the Harvard Law Review. Now let me just give you a little bit about how prestigious the Har Harvard Law Review magazine is. It is the most sought after position uh, in any college campus and certainly at Harvard to be the president of the Harvard Law Review. Obama, once a C student, is now within nine months of going into Harvard, captures that prestigious and honored position and holds it until his graduation. Uh, Obama was elected the uh, president of the Harvard Law Review uh, in 1990. Now, the process had been, uh, up until the 1970s, all people that were uh, editors or board members of the Harvard Law Review were selected based on their grade average and your grade average had to be I mean had to be right up there you know 4.4.4.4. .4 and by Obama's time however they, however they had been somewhat of a a lowering of that standard because of affirmative action but let me give you an idea of the type of per people that have held the office of president of the Harvard Law, Re Law Review uh, one person in particular comes to mind, Elliot Richardson, who was the former attorney general, um, and also Edwin Griswold, who was the, uh, uh, the ex-dean of the Harvard Law School and also solicitor general. But people who never made it to the, be the president of the Harvard Law Review, but were uh, board members of the Harvard Law Review are people like Stephen Breyer, U.S. Supreme Court Justice, uh, Felix Frankfurter, uh, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who is also U.S. Supreme Court Justice, and now Elena Kagan, who obviously rubbed shoulders with, El with El Obama at uh, Harvard, John Roberts, who is now the Supreme Court Chief Justice, and Antoine Scalia. These are all people. So these are board members. So it gives you some idea of the brain power, the intellectual strength, and the legal strength that one must have uh, to be just a board member, Anthony Scalia, Ruth Gale Ginsburg, John Roberts never made it to be the president. Obama did, coming from Occidental, everybody, and some of the noted judges that, um, that have served on the Harvard Law Review as board members were Judge Leonard Hand and Richard Posner, and of course, uh, Archibald Cox, who was the U.S. Solicitor General, and uh, surprisingly enough, Elliot Spitzer as well was a member of the Harvard Law Review. The other thing about being the president of Harvard Law Review, you must be able to write opinions about cases that are being either presented to the U.S. Supreme Court or in some law court that captures the attention and the imagination of the law community. And, uh, and you must have written prolifically uh, and given opinions in order to be able to be the president. The president oversees all the editorial reviews, all the articles that are placed in the magazine or in the newspaper and gives final approval of the current mindset of, of that particular news or organ, organ as would be the president of any news organization like the New York Times, LA Times or whatever. Obama was the president overseeing every other editor and writer. Obama would have been in charge of the thinks and the, the, the thinking, the writing of people like Elena Kagan. He would have been in charge of people like Elliot Spitzer, their writing, their thinking, and their legal scholarly ability. But the problem is here is that you cannot find, if you search high and low, because these records cannot be sealed, you cannot find one article that Mr. Barack Hussein Obama wrote for the Harvard Law Review. He never wrote anything. He was just given the office, and we have to ask the question why. Is Obama a CIA-made man? And now this you'll have to allow me to pontificate. Is Obama a CIA-made man? And by that I mean because of his contribution and work that he did in Afghanistan with the Mujahideen and later the Taliban, and very possibly his organizational skills that created the Taliban that took control of Afghanistan, 
that he has vital information about the ongoing interest of the CIA in the Middle East and Islamic affairs, so much so that they gave him cover and gave him a phony degree from Columbia University because he wasn't there. That much has been documented in the CIA Columbia Obama Sedition and Treason Trial. And my best witnesses are three people of high credibility. George Stephanopoulos said he wasn't there. Wayne Allen Root said he wasn't there. And Bill Hemmer of Fox News, who interviewed 400 people of the class from 81 to 83, and all 400 people said they never even heard the name Barack Obama. So he wasn't there. So he was covered by the CIA during the two and four years that he was in Afghanistan. Is he a CIA made man? And Obama has put pressure on the CIA, asked for an opportunity to enter Harvard, was given carte blanche to go into the Harvard uh, law school and then asked to be the president of the law review got that as well and when Hillary Clinton was running to be the president of the United States he asked for the office of the president of the United States and the CIA gave him that as well now obviously I can't document that those last things I said regarding the Harvard Law Review regarding Harvard as an institution but I can document unequivocally he was never at Columbia University we got that documented what I want to do now is this. I want to ask the question about where we are as, as a people. And, and my question is this, more of an appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court, upon which now Elena Kagan sits, and she ain't never going to do anything on that court that would, have, uh, that would harm Barack Hussein Obama. But we had a caller who called in a few moments ago named Truth Seeker, and a uh, faithful listening to a listener to the Manning Report, who stated that even if they were to find a birth certificate for Barack Obama somewhere in the files of the Hawaiian Department of Health, even if they were to find one, he still does not qualify of the stringent requirements of Article Two, Segment Section A of the U.S. Constitution. And he doesn't qualify because we know, and he has published, and the flimsy paper that we have seen, certification of live birth, indicates that his blood father is Barack Hussein Obama Sr., who at the time was a British subject as Kenya was colonized by the Brits. And the 1948 National British Nationality Act uh, gave a global and sweeping citizenship mandate that any child born of a subject of the British crown was indeed a citizen of Britain as well. So in as much as Barack Hussein Obama's father is and was a British subject that made his birth subject to the British 19, 1948 uh, Nationality Act. But so he could never be qualified. Obama could never qualify under any circumstance. While I don't believe they're ever going to come up with a birth certificate unless they're out ready to be made a fool of by yours truly, because I'll be all of it like a cheap suit. But I can tell you this. He could never qualify to be the U.S. president. But the other thing is, is that he had to uh, denounce his patriotism to America, renounce his American citizenship to attend school in Indonesia, a nation that is 93% Muslim. Uh, and when he went there in Jakarta and attended that madrasa, he took the, his stepfather, Lolo Shatora, adopted him, gave him the name Barry Shatoro, and this is all proven, documented in Jerome Corsi's book, Obama Nation. And there's a big swap of a registration form of the school that Obama attended that lists his name as Barry Shatoro because he became, he denounced his American citizenship, became the son of Lolo Shatoro. It is documented. And that when he returned to America, he never repatriated himself. So the very fact that he never repatriated himself means that even if he had repatriated, repatriated himself, he would have at the best being, been a naturalized citizen, but not natural born, which means under no circumstance does Obama qualify to be the U.S. president. The matter of the birth certificate is just a matter of contention, but the, it's the Constitution that prevents Obama 
Any way he tries to get in, he can't get in. And this can be documented. It can't be sealed. It's proven record. There is, all of what I've said can be bullet point entered and is not pontification. And it is absolute fact that cannot be contradicted. But finally, let me say this. Don't you know that Chief Justice Roberts, who sat on the Harvard Law Review Board, don't you know that Atlanta Kagan, don't you know that Anthony Scalia, don't you know that Chief Justice Breyers, don't you know that they know all of this? Don't you know that these legal scholars, these brilliant minds from Harvard who now sit on our U.S. Supreme Court, don't you know that they know that Obama is ineligible, you know, just by the statements I've made regarding the Constitution, the British Nationality Act, and the Repatriatism Act? Don't you know that they know that? Don't you know that they know that clearly? There's no question in their mind. The man is not eligible. They know it. I said they know it, everybody. But not only them. Everybody else knows it as well who's taking the time to look into this matter uh, with any kind of a seriousness and with openness to the truth. Dr. Jerome Corsi's new book is coming out and it is a blockbuster. See if you can get an advanced copy of it because it, it reveals the very same thing that, you, that I'm discussing with you at present. But what is going on in our media now? Because the media knows that Obama is ineligible. They are slamming the living daylights out of Donald Trump. I don't know what Mr. Trump is going to do. I have no idea whether he will pursue this or whether he will be able to stand up under the pressure. They're making fun about his hair. They are saying that the, the birth certificate issue is a whack job issue. It's for loonies and for crazies. I mean, and they're bringing out Hollywood, every, including Fox News, including Ann Coulter, Michelle Bachman, they're all slamming Donald Trump. And they're trying to make the Republican Party look like an idiot party if they tolerate Donald Trump's inquiry regarding the birth certificate issue. I don't know how far he's going, but I can tell you this, we need to pray for him, that he can remain strong. And I can say of a surety right now, Donald Trump can drop the birth certificate issue right now if he chooses to do so. I pray that he doesn't. But if he does, I will have to take my hat off to him and congratulate him because he has now pushed it up to the top of the hill and can't nobody push it back down again. So thank you, Mr. Trump. I don't know how far you're going and you probably don't have to continue to go further. You have done the job. Plus, the American people have seen the hypocrisy and the closed-mindedness of the media who is slamming this, who will not investigate, who will not let these truths that I just made mention of come to the light. They are covering, they are criminally covering up a story, and they are fighting Donald Trump they're not treating this like a news story. They are treating this as if it is what it is for them. They know that once the truth is seen and the American people have get light of it, their jobs and careers are over with and they're all going to jail. No one will ever trust them. So they're not protecting Obama now when they fight Trump. They are protecting their own hides because they have lied. George Stephanopoulos sat across from Obama and knows that the man never went to Columbia University and acts as if there is nothing amiss. I appeal to you. I appeal to all of us. Keep your powder dry. This one last comment. Jesus is Lord. Everything that is spoken in the closet will be shouted from the rooftop. And everything done in the dark will be brought to the light. I don't represent the Tea Party. I don't need them. In fact, the world would be better off were they not in existence. I don't represent the Republican Party. I'm not one. I'm not a conservative. I'm not a liberal. I'm not a Democrat. I'm a Christian. I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. 
And from the first day I opened my mouth and said the long-legged Mac Daddy, until this day three years ago, I have been serving the interests of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way, the only way, the only way this matter will not be brought to light and Obama and Bill O'Reilly and others go to jail is that Jesus ain't Lord. If Jesus is Lord, Obama is going to jail. And I praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. This matter will come to light. I'm James David Manning. This is the Manning Report.